Third speaker is Dr. Kanto. Please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And uh, first of all, uh, I want to appreciate all the, uh, all the participants in this room uh, for this uh, episode uh, single topic conference as one of the uh, Japanese board members of this committee. And my topic, uh, topic is uh, regarding about uh, hepatitis B virus uh, immunology uh, today. Uh, let me start with this natural history of hepatitis B virus infection. As you know, uh, most of the chronic cases of HPV infections occurred uh, after uh, vertical or horizontal infection at the infancy. Of course, we have the hepatitis B virus vaccine, and uh, we can protect most of the uh, vaccine uh, uh, protect by the uh, HPV vaccine uh, for mother to child transmission. But if it failed, uh, spontaneous clearance uh, rarely occurs, uh, less than 10%. And uh, most of the cases have uh, developed to chronic carrier state, uh, more than 90% uh, E antigen positive state. After that, uh, HPV carrier state, E antigen negative cases in 85 to 90%. Not all HPV infected patients develop to liver uh, cirrhosis or liver cancer. But the remaining 10 or 10 to 20 percent uh, develop to chronic hepatitis with inflammation. And after that, uh, liver cirrhosis and develop of uh, liver cancer occurs at this percentage of a uh, yearly basis. And we know that uh, chronic hepatitis cases are really hard to treat because HPV virus is hard to be eradicated virus. And uh, as a clinicians, uh, we know that hepatitis B cure uh, is uh, shown. Uh, it, this is a typical uh, pattern of viral. Uh, response after inducing the therapy. Uh, we know that this is a functional cure. It's really important for reducing the risk of hepatitis uh, cellular carcinoma in chronic HPV cases. And that is a uh, condition with HPS antigen negative uh, with or without uh, anti-HPS. But still, uh, there's a remaining uh, component of HPV genome in the inside of the cells, that is CCC DNA, or HPV integrated uh, to host genomes. Uh, so we know that this is a really hard to uh, treat conditions in the chronic hepatitis B cases. Uh, but before uh, I started about a uh, vaccine study, uh, we published uh, recently about uh, uh, acute hepatitis B cases. We examined uh, the pattern of immune response in the course of acute hepatitis B and compared uh, reservoirs and non reservoirs And we comprehensively analyzed about the dynamics of cytokines or chemokines in those cases. And Sachio has published uh, recently, uh, this is a typical case of three of reservoirs. Uh, when we look into that comprehensively about the chemokines and cytokines, we found uh, these chemokines, CXCR9, 10, 11, and 13, and also R21 is significantly increased and coincidentally at the peak of LT or HPV DNA. And after declining that these uh, LT and HPV DNA, these factors are coincidentally and simultaneously decrease in parallel. And uh, the point is, uh, such kind of changes are uh, applicable uh, also in chronic cases uh, with attaining the functional cure. But again, uh, this is a very uh, rare case. Uh, we found a case uh, that is a chronic hepatitis B patients under treatment with combination of nucleotide analogs and PEG interferon alpha, that is a sequential therapy. Uh, this case, uh, we found that again, HBS antigen declining, started to decline and a continuation of nucleotide analogs. And in the meantime, uh, during the PEG interferon alpha, uh, HBS antigen negative uh, condition was attained. And when we look into such kind of chemokines uh, in analog with acute hepatitis B cases, uh, CXCL9, 10, 11, uh, uh, showed a uh, peak uh, during the nucleotide analog uh, therapy duration. Uh, in contrast, uh, CXCL13, IL21, uh, showed a peak uh, in the meantime of hepagulated interferon alpha. And after that, HBS antigen clearance. And late after that, anti-HBS emerged. So this is a, a very rare case of uh, functional cure uh, under treatment. Uh, when we compared uh, the correlation about such factors and also the self, uh, self factors uh, 
the dynamics with HB oxygen uh, declining cases, we found that only R21 and HBS antigen titers are negatively correlated, inversely correlated uh, in acute hepatitis B cases, so suggesting that uh, increase of chemokines and following R21 increase might be correlated with HBS antigen declining. And in order to extract as much as possible information from limited number of biomaterials, uh, we used two brand new technologies for this analysis. Uh, Cytoff, uh, that is a very expensive machine, but very powerful. Uh, Cytoff is a fax system combined with uh, mass cytometry, and uh, it uh, analyzes metal-bound uh, antibodies, specifically that each molecules and no overlap, that is a position, um, potential advantage of side off. Uh, we can extract uh, more than 30 signals at the uh, same time from the single cell level. And after using a web-based uh, analytic program, that is a speed, and we can visualize in a 2D map uh, over there and uh, uh, compiling about the size and uh, that is the cell numbers information, and also the clusters we can find, and a full bunch of uh, PBMC populations. And also the signaling molecules are colored in thick and different colors like that. So we can visualize and, uh, at a single picture uh, like this about the dynamics of the uh, immune cell populations. And we apply this system to the acute hepatitis B cases, resolvers. And again, uh, this is a clinical course of acute hepatitis B cases for the analysis. And the blackboard, that is ART, and bold line, that is HBB DNA. And in the top panel, uh, HBS antigen antibody dynamics I can show. And of course, this is a typical uh, resolving cases uh, without any nucleotide analogs. So when we're dragging out about uh, frequency uh, information and uh, first of all, uh, the red circle in the bottom, I uh, pick, and that is the PDC, uh, plasma side on the uh, dendritic cell signals. And when we uh, extracting out the frequency uh, data from this PDC uh, clusters, uh, we uh, can observe uh, that uh, serial increase uh, to the uh, PDC uh, frequency uh, to the, from A to E, and uh, the time course, uh, D is, that is HPS antigen negative point, uh, that is uh, show the PDC frequency hit the peak. And right after that, uh, after anti-HPS antibody emerged, uh, PDC frequency decreases. Uh, the importance is uh, how, how many uh, information from this uh, side of, uh, from small, uh, limited number of DC populations. Uh, this is an example of the uh, information of the immune uh, markers. Uh, we uh, uh, focus on the Sigulex. Uh, that is uh, electing uh, light uh, molecules, uh, delivering and sometimes about uh, negative signals to immune cells. Uh, Sigulex is a family of uh, members, a family uh, of subclasses members from eight, uh, 1 to 10. Uh, I show in the bottom of the slide, uh, left hand the PDCs and the right hand the MDCs uh, time course from A to E. And the yellow color, that is a higher expression compared to the black uh, uh, colored uh, the portion. And PDCs have uh, only cyclic 1 and 5 are expressed on the cells. And on the column of the uh, cyclic 5, uh, we can visualize uh, from A to E the thick yellow to uh, light yellow. So that means uh, on PDCs, uh, cyclic 5 is highly expressed uh, at the peak of LT, and then gradually decreases to the anti-HBS uh, antibody emergence. The MDCs, uh, the cigarette members, uh, dynamics are a little bit complicated compared to the PDC, but we can see uh, such kind of uh, dynamics of immune molecules at the same time. And, and the next uh, powerful tool we can obtain is a single cell RNA seq analysis. Uh, this is how recently developed uh, the system, uh, 10x. Uh, that is a very really, uh, useful and high throughput analysis for uh, getting a comprehensive gene expression profile, the RNA sequence, uh, from at the single cell level. Uh, we use uh, this system uh, for the PBMC from chronic hepatitis C patients, for example. 
And after uh, purifying, uh, this is substance from PBMC is uh, showing here at the bottom of the right. Uh, that is a phenotype of uh, DC populations. And after that, has purified the single cells uh, from this population and subjected to high sec analysis. And the uh, left uh, top panel, that is the cluster uh, analysis of the five uh, DC populations in the PBMC of the chronic hepatitis C patients in the left side and uh, right side. Uh, that is a typical uh, gene markers uh, shown uh, from top to the bottom that each five uh, DC subset clusters. Uh, we can uh, dragging out uh, many gene information from this uh, DC subset clusters. And this is a, a heat map of uh, 10 top uh, highly expressed genes uh, for uh, five uh, DC subset from uh, left to right. And the right panel, uh, that is a typical uh, phenotypic genes of correct 9 n and CLOR554 that is uh, expressed on BDCS repulsive disease. So we confirmed uh, we are uh, able to analyze such kind of uh, compre uh, comprehensive gene signatures from human samples. And setting back uh, to the immune intervention, uh, this is a, a review paper uh, recently published. And in the middle of chart, uh, that is a, a typical pattern of progression of immune tolerance to E antigen hepatitis, E antigen negative hepatitis cases uh, for the long term. Uh, as you may know, uh, immune status of chronic hepatitis cases varies dynamically from immune tolerance to active uh, phase. Yeah, in the bottom of the chart, uh, there is uh, some kind of arrows up or uh, minus. Uh, that means severe exhaustion and hepatitis and the timing, the occurrence of each uh, phases of this chronic course. And uh, everybody knows the functional cure is really uh, hard uh, to uh, accomplish. And everybody says that the immune uh, response is a key uh, to attain a functional cure, but we still don't know what is appropriate immune intervention is uh, possible for any set of staging of these chronic cases. And in the bottom, that is the checkpoint inhibitors or therapeutic vaccine or TCLT is considered at this phase of chronic cases. Uh, I want to pick up the therapeutic, uh, therapeutic vaccine uh, uh, for the analysis of immune intervention. Uh, we uh, want to know what kind of immune response is needed uh, for acquiring durable and also sufficient anti-HPS uh, for long term. Uh, this uh, chart uh, shows a typical pattern of anti-HPS uh, response uh, after hepatitis B vaccination in adults. And we categorize into four uh, groups uh, according to the titers of anti-HPS, very high and high, low, and non-responder. Uh, we set the threshold and the 10 mil IU per ml, that is the response or non-response. And the three uh, set of immune reactions might be occurred, uh, that is acquisition of anti-HPS or gaining a uh, high title of anti-HPS and uh, maintenance of it. And first, uh, we enrolled uh, the th uh, 3,070 uh, healthy uh, medical students who were immunized by HP vaccine for the first time. Uh, let me remind, uh, in Japan, uh, universal vaccination is only implemented uh, in two years ago, uh, that is 2016. So these uh, medical students were not uh, immunized at the first time. And when we compare the acquisition rate in the different uh, groups, uh, you, when you look into the gender uh, that the top left, and that is uh, the all response rate, uh, that means again the patients who acquired more than 10 mil IU uh, anti-HBS, and 92 percent. And the female is uh, responded very well compared to the male, that is already reported. And uh, the bottom one, vaccine strain, uh, influences about the uh, success rate of hepatitis B vaccination. Uh, we had and have and Heptavax and Bimugan and Menu, three kinds of HPV vaccines in Japan. Uh, those are strain at GDA uh, to C and composition of HPV antigen as shown here. And the difference is uh, Menu contains pre S2 and vaccine. And acquired an TBS titer in this population uh, when you look into the light uh, bar graph. Uh, low response, that is a low responder, is uh, approximately 10% in this uh, cohorts. 
And in order to find out uh, initial anti-HPS response influential for the maintenance of uh, the long during uh, maintenance of anti-HPS thereafter, uh, we compare the dynamics of anti-HPS after first time HPV vaccination. So this is a retrospective study. So uh, the patients were, uh, no, no, uh, healthy donors uh, recruited uh, to this analysis. Uh, if they, are, uh, they could be followed and uh, traced back uh, more than 10 years, retrospective analysis. Uh, when we categorized uh, about uh, three groups, very high and high, uh, low, uh, that again is the initial anti-HPS titer group. Uh, as you can imagine very well, the initial uh, virus titer, uh, anti-HPS titer response, if they have the more, the longer uh, duration of anti-HPS thereafter. So the first time HBB response is really important. So we went to break down about the response, what kind of immune cells are contributed to this vaccine response. Uh, this picture uh, is a little bit complicated, but not so uh, difficult to understand uh, for myself. But anyway, uh, hepatitis B virus infection, HB, uh, vaccine antigens can take up the dermal uh, dendritic cell or lymphoid tissue. And the vaccine response, of course, uh, finally the response is getting about anti-HPS. So antibody uh, producing B cell renal cells activation is really important. Uh, that response uh, should be occurred in the germinal center. Uh, TFH, uh, we can uh, really uh, interesting about this cell populations. It's really important, uh, not only uh, differentiation of the B cell uh, maturation in the germinal center, but also uh, it also influenced about the CDL activation and expansion. So R21 uh, is again, is really important factor. Uh, also, we support that uh, in this vaccine response. Uh, this is a gating strategy, uh, the, big, uh, the gating strategy of uh, immune cell substance in the peripheral about the vaccinees. And this is a prospective study. We collected samples before the vaccination and after three shots, uh, after one month of three shots, third shot, uh, we collected again the PMMC and compared about the response of these immune cell substances in the following slide. And we compared the uh, uh, non-response and the response and the groups uh, between two. And pre and after, at the seven months, that is after uh, one month after the third shot, uh, compare their immune cell frequency between these and also compare them uh, between non-response and response. And uh, of course, uh, this is the only the, uh, very important data I can show you. We analyze also T cells and DC and B cell, uh, all the subsets in this comparison. Yeah, let me show you that uh, in this slide, the response of T, uh, follicle helper T cells. Again, this is a very important cell for the B cell maturation uh, in the germinal centers. Uh, but we can detect in a peripheral type and a TFH uh, for selecting the uh, specific markers of PD-1 in the peripheral TFH. Uh, this uh, TFH uh, response is significantly increased in the responders only responders, but not uh, in non-responders. Uh, when we're paraphrasing about the subsets of TFH, TFH1 and TFH17, that is a positive response. And here, again, only in the responder group, but not in the non-response group. And uh, what we want to know uh, the tighter uh, the response is very important for the maintenance thereafter. And we compare uh, the correlation uh, the between the anti-HPS and uh, various humoral factors, uh, again, the cytokines and the chemokines, uh, very uh, comprehensively analyzed uh, those correlations. Uh, we found that the play, uh, serum levels of these chemokines and cytokines are positively correlated with anti-HPS after third shot. Uh, the other factors, uh, including uh, TNF-alpha, or R2, or many other factors were not correlated with anti-HPS titers and then afterwards. So uh, this means preconditioning of the uh, vaccinees are really important to getting the higher title of anti-HPS, maybe influential for the uh, possible the genetic disposition. And let me summarize about the vaccine study. Uh, this is the hero uh, has done accomplishment. And again, this pattern of anti-HBS response, we found the acquisition of anti-HBS, TFH, and the maturation of B-cell lineage uh, is really important. 
and gaining a higher title of anti-HBS, uh, we show that preconditioning condition or cytokine milieu, uh, again, uh, CX09 and 10, uh, interferon gamma, uh, that is really important for uh, obtaining uh, the maximum anti-HBS uh, titers. And the maintenance uh, response, uh, because of the limitation of time, I didn't show the result, we found that the memory B cell response or antibody producing cell response is really important for the maintenance of the higher titer of anti-HBS. So let me summarize in this slide, in my talk, the functional HPV cure uh, is a desirable target to reduce the risk of liver cancer, all we know. And immune intervention is one of the options for functional cure, again, we know, but it's really hard. As a blueprint, uh, the study uh, on acute hepatitis B we done uh, suggests that timely elevation of chemokines and IL-21 is a hallmark of HPV clearance, and the follicle helper T cells and cytokine milieu are involved in the acquisition and gaining of higher tide of anti-HBS in vaccinees in adults. Uh, innovative technology, uh, I show the example of the analysis, the side of or single cell RNA seq are powerful for maximizing information for a limited number of human samples that is really the pave the road to development of immune intervention uh, therapies. So I want to uh, stop here and thank you, the, all the colleagues and young uh, doctors uh, working together in our center. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kanto. Uh, and okay. Dr. Eno. Thank you for interesting talk. Uh, I would like to ask about the uh, HBS and uh, HBS antibody after vaccination. Yes. Uh, you, your data showed that about 10 to 50 percent of the vaccine did not does not respond. Yes. To the HBS yes, in this vaccination. Cohort. Vaccination. So in this in these patients or participants, uh, are there any possibility to infect HBV after? after the vaccination and without HBS anti antibody response. Uh, because uh, after implementing uh, the universal vaccination for newborns, uh, almost uh, HB, HB carrier diminished almost zero, even uh, 10 to 50 percent of the people may not respond to the HBS vaccination. So what, the, what is the mechanism of this discrepancy? I think that uh, the even uh, without HBS an antibody after vaccination, these people still uh, may have the ability to protect HBS, HB infection. Uh, again, um, these uh, studies were done by medical doctors who were not immunized at the birth rate. And of course, uh, we want to know what happens after uh, they are gaining anti-HBS. I believe uh, if they continue to anti-HBS at the uh, protective level, uh, they, can protect, they can be protected by HPV. I hope so. And of course, HPV universal vaccination just started again in Japan. So we want to see in future about the uh, effectiveness of birth dose uh, HPV vaccination in this country in terms of uh, protecting about acute hepatitis B. That is a really important issue. Please. Yeah, thank you for a wonderful talk. In your vaccination study, so I was surprised that from your data that the antib antibody titer were correlated with the interferon gamma yes. level, pre-vaccination level, That's right? right yeah. Then, then pre-vaccination interferon gamma level. So what determined this level? The, yes. Like genetic or non-genetic? Yes, yeah. I think that is really important. So it's really hard to uh, estimate about the reason uh, for ourselves. But now I'm considering about the genetic disposition about this type. Because uh, these days, uh, the analysis of host genome has developed uh, very uh, rapidly. And we know that uh, the cytokine level against the vaccine or uh, pathogens is determined by the EQDL. Uh, that is a small change of gene disposition in every uh, populations. So some kind of EQDL uh, involved in this uh, pre-level uh, of cytokine milieu, I hope so. But it's really uh, hard to analyze right now. So we want to see in future about the composition and contribution of uh, genetic disposition in the pre-conditioning uh, about these vaccines. Thank you. Please. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. About the PDC, so you showed that the frequency of PDC yes. increased after the uh, HPV resolution. Uh, 
also you showed that the expression of Shigrek 5 on that's PDC right, was yeah. decreased. So that suggests there is inverse correlation between Shigrek 5 and PDC. So do you know if the, the Shigrek 5 suppresses the PDC? Uh, the we expansion? don't know. <laughs> because maybe you know that Shigrek <laughs> is a really complicated molecule that sometimes are uh, inhibitory and sometimes not functioning. Uh, still, we don't know some type of Shigrek that function. We don't know. So Shigrek 5 is one of the uh, examples for the analysis, but if that uh, works as a suppressive function to the mm -hmm. disease, that is understandable because okay. after uh, the ALT uh, peak, that was a higher expression and then decreases uh, still. That means uh, suppressive functions may be neg negated okay. in the successive course of anti-HBS response. Okay. That's one possibility, Thank but you still don't know. One more question. So do, do you know if the HBB directly estimate Shigrek 5? Mm -hmm. Do you know if the HBB stimulates uh, you? I don't know. Okay. We, Thank you we haven't much. checked yet. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Yes. Two last questions, lady. Hi. Um, I would like to follow up on the question of uh, the preconditioning of the cytokine yes. level when with the responding. Mm -hmm. um, so do you suggest uh, any solution for increase uh, induce the responding in non-responders? Yes. Should we increase the dose or what should we do? Yes, that's a really important question. We are always thinking about how can do it uh, to overcome such kind of uh, uh, background data. And I think one of the solutions I might have in mind is that is a uh, uh, consideration now about the adjuvant. Uh, because how these days, how HPV, HPV vaccination is a really successful vaccine all over the world, we, I know. So, but still, how we don't have the therapeutic vaccine. So we construct uh, and develop some kind of therapeutic vaccine. Uh, we need to know what kind of adjuvant is most powerful to induce anti-HPV response, uh, the humoral or T-cell response. So, mm -hmm. Initial uh, response uh, to the injection of such kind of adjuvant with component of HPV antigens, uh, some kind of uh, this uh, interferon gamma or CX09 response may evoke uh, to the, at the first uh, injection. Uh, we can be successful if we, uh, you, if we use such advanced uh, adjuvant vaccine. So in your analysis, do we look at the age dependent? Do you think that uh, if we uh, do the vaccination at the earlier age, you can have a better response? Mm. Uh, uh, we haven't checked about that possibility in our hands, but it might be possible. Whatever it's in the data, you can look at if it's age dependent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank Maybe. you. Maybe. Don't okay. have an answer right now. So. Okay, Thank the you. last question. Yeah, uh, follow, follow her, uh, Ni from Taiwan, and uh, follow her question. I think, uh, do you see any difference between the uh, men and women whose uh, response to the uh, vaccination? Uh, yes, I showed the data in the slide that a female is better. It's uh, better, so that's male. the same. Yeah. And the other question is about the non-responders. Mm. Do you check their HRA typing? Uh, yes, we are very interested about the type because uh, there are some reports about uh, non-response contributing HRA uh, class 2 molecules. But in this population, we haven't checked yet. Yes, thank you very much, thank Professor Kanto and all audience. I close the session. <laughs>